Hello everyone, it's Mrs Swift here again. I've been thinking that we've been out of school for a very long time and it's also been quite a while since I've read you a story. And then I was thinking, we need something more than a story. We need to be able to start thinking about maybe doing some things. So I found this great book, Get Outdoors. And it's got some really super ideas in here. Now I'm going to read it to you, but there are places in this book where you might need to stop and go off and do something. Now you don't have to go off and do something, you can just listen to the story. But if you wanted to go off and do something, there are some fabulous ideas in here of things that you can do outside. Things that make you stop. Things that make you think. Things that make you look and things that make you take notice of things around you. You might hear something you haven't heard before. You might notice how something feels or the touch of something before. There's all sorts of exciting things. So I think we should just get started. Are you ready? Saturday morning and Jada and her brother Michael are watching TV. That's all they ever do, says their dad. And it's a beautiful day and we are lucky enough to have a garden. But they will not budge from that couch. Suddenly dad has an idea. Kids, who wants to win a prize? Well, this gets their attention. Me, me, says Jada and Michael. They both shout out to Daddy. Then switch off the TV and listen up. So there's Daddy looking annoyed. And there's Jada and Michael listening. You're going to play the garden game. The winner is the person who can notice the most interesting things in the garden. Now take a notebook each and a pen to write down everything that you see and remember sometimes the smallest things are the most interesting so you need to be looking really carefully. What surprise asked Michael who is very competitive. It's a surprise says dad. Now, off you go and play, and you've got till midday. That's 12 o'clock noon. Now, this is where you could press the pause button. Because if you have a garden or a park near your home, you could take a little moment to go outside and be curious and spend some time having a look around your outdoors. There is Jada and Mike running outside after they have listened to Dad. Hmm, moaned Jada, looking at the garden. There's not that much interesting here that I can see. All I see are the usual flowers, grass. Try slowing down and looking much more closely, says Dad. Sometimes there are things that are worth noticing, but it takes time to see them clearly. Let's have a little look at some of the things that Michael has discovered. Like Jada, he also sees flowers, but he notices that there are different types of flowers in the garden. He wrote down there were flowers with white petals and that there were flowers with yellow petals and green edges. And there were red flowers and purple flowers and small pink flowers. He wrote down a lot of detail. Like Jada, Michael also noticed the grass. But he also noticed a blade that had been a little bit eaten by an ant. And another blade that had a few little drops of dew on it. It's as if Michael's eyes had turned into great big magnifying glasses and he was seeing all the little things there were to see. Now we can pause again here and it says you can turn your eyes into magnifying glasses 
All you have to do is to decide to slow everything down and to look at things in much more detail and be a little bit more curious about what you're looking at and what it is you see. You can try that now. You could choose any object, even one inside if you don't have a garden or you're not in the park, and have a good look at it. Look carefully at it and look at some of the details that you can see on it. What colour is it? Is it smooth? Is it rough? Is it big? Is it small? Is it jaggy? Lots of different things you can think about. Okay. Jada tries looking at the grass with curiosity. And then this is what she sees. Oh, look, she sees a little ladybird. And then she notices little paw prints and she notices a great big footprint in the garden. Dad shouts from the kitchen, Looking with your eyes is only one way of taking notice of what's around you. But it's not the only one. Jada and Michael are a bit puzzled. How else can you take notice? Now we can press pause here again and we need to think of other ways that you can notice things that are in your garden or in your park or just around where you are. We need to be thinking. If we're not just looking, we maybe need to think about all the other senses we have. Remember like hearing and touching and tasting. I wonder if he's talking about any of those. Let's see. We notice by seeing, ooh, smelling, tasting, touching and hearing. They are called our five senses. Sometimes one sense is stronger and some t than, it is than another. And we use our senses to pay attention then the whole world opens up and there are a lot more interesting things to see. So Michael is touching the wood. Jada is smelling the flowers. Jada is listening. See what she can hear. Oh, she hears a bird sweeting. And Michael is, oh, what is he doing? I need to turn around. He is tasting a lovely apple. Right now, Jada's using her sense of touch. She is kneeling on a wet clump of grass on her knees and it feels cold and a bit itchy. That's a very good observation, she thinks. So she writes it down on her pad with her pen. Jada moves to a warmer, drier part of the garden. Her cold knees slowly begin to feel like muffins being warmed up in an oven. She seldomly notices her knees and she thinks this feels very good to me right now. Michael pauses too to notice his sense of touch. The soft moist grass cools his bare feet and there is an ant crawling over his elbow. And it feels prickly. There they are. Knees like muffins, feet cold in the grass and a little ant feeling prickly on his elbow. So we can have another pause here if you want and it says, What do you notice right now with your sense of touch? Your clothes on your skin, do you like them? Your fingers on the page of this book? How does it feel? Well, that's for me because you don't have the book, isn't it? Being patient and curious will make your senses more powerful. So try a few different things and don't rush. And talk to somebody about what it is you can feel and what it is you can notice. What happens when I switch to hearing? Wonders Jada. She moves her attention to her ears and she starts to listen. First of all, 
she can hear some bird song. There must be a bird, maybe up in a tree. But then she remembers to be patient and curious. And she closes her eyes, which makes the sense of hearing even sharper. She listens and listens. And first of all, she hears different noises. She can hear a car going by. And she can hear a dog that must be barking in another garden. So there's the birdie. And then she's listening with her big ear, do you hear, see? And then she hears the dog and she hears the car. Wow, she thinks to herself, so many sounds are appearing now that I am being patient and curious. She listens even closer and she tunes into other sounds. She hears something up in the sky. What would that be? Yes, you're right. An aeroplane. Not so many aeroplane noises at the moment now that we're in lockdown. Have you noticed that in your garden? Not so many aeroplanes flying over. Not so many people travelling because it's not as safe as it used to be. We can press pause again now. What sounds can you discover right now? All you need to do is to close your eyes for a minute, relax and patiently just wait and see what sounds appears. You don't have to try to hear them all. Just let them come to you. You can just sit there and say, I'm ready sounds. I'm ready to welcome all of you. And then you stop talking. I wonder what you will hear. Now let's move on. While Jada is listening to sounds, Michael is on all fours at the other end of the garden. Dad sees him from the kitchen window. Is he pretending to be a dog, he wonders? With his nose in the floor bed, Michael is using his sense of smell to discover many different scents given off by the flowers. Some smell lovely and sweet like honey, and others don't have a strong smell, hardly a smell at all. And then a strong, mm, ooh, almost spicy smell. Ooh, it gives him a frown on his face. He doesn't like that smell. Uh-oh, oh no, this is not a flower he is smelling. The neighbor's dog has been in and it has used their flower bed has a toilet. Oh no, he was smelling poo. Oh, so he wasn't pretending to be a dog, but poor old Michael ended up smelling the neighbor's dog's poo. That's not good. Well, nature, the outside world, is full of sights, textures, sounds and smells. Some you might experience as pleasant such as the feel of the warm sun on your skin. Some may be unpleasant, like the smell of dog poo. Some are perhaps neither pleasant or unpleasant, just like a car passing by or somebody walking by. Just imagine what it would be like if we didn't have our senses to experience the world around us and all the things that there are to see and smell, and hear, and touch, and taste. We can press pause again. Take a moment right now and think about these five senses you have. Think about the things that you're able to see and how wonderful that is. Think about the things you can hear and how great it is to hear all the things that you want to hear. What do you notice about touching things? and how things feel different, how they can be a different temperature or they can be they can be rough or they can be cuddly or they can be soft. Can you smell anything just at this moment? I wonder what you can smell. I wish you could tell me. I wish I could hear you whenever you're using your talking. Someday soon that is going to happen and I am really looking forward to it. 
Wait a moment, said Michael. We've forgotten something. Jada realises this too. What is it? She can almost remember. It's on the tip of my tongue, she says. <gasps> can you remember? Can you think what Jada and Michael have forgotten? Is it on the tip of your tongue? Two. Time for the surprise, Jada's dad calls. They run into the kitchen, leaving their notebooks on the grass. That's it, the children shout, feeling their mouths beginning to water at the sight of the delicious, sweet cake that is waiting for them. It's our sense of taste. They had been looking, they had been listening, they had been smelling, and they had been touching. But up until now, they had not been tasting. Oh, look at the lovely treat that Daddy has for them there. Mmm, sweet cake with creamy icing and raspberries and chocolate. Mmm, who cares about a competition now? We can share this and use our sense of taste together. So Jada and Michael ended up having a really good time together. They went outside, they turned off their television and they took time to think about things and to stop, to look, to stop, to listen, to stop, to smell, to stop, to touch and then together they used their sense of taste eating the lovely chocolate cake that Dad had set out for them in the kitchen as their surprise. So I hope you enjoyed this story. I also hope you'll think about going outside, even if it's not right now. Maybe the next time you're going out with your family, whether it's to the park or to the beach, or do you know something? Even going shopping, you can stop and listen. But of course, for now, you're not really going shopping. But you are allowed to go out for a walk and you are allowed to go out with your family now. So when you go out the next time, into your garden or beyond, think about this story that Mrs Swift has shared about, with you. Think about how you can take time. Think about how things can seem different when you stop to look, stop to listen, stop to smell and stop to touch. And then maybe you will have a lovely treat afterwards and stop and taste something delicious. For now, I hope you're all keeping well. It's coming close to our summer. And I hope that you're being good at home. And I hope that you're staying safe. And I hope that sometime very soon, we will all be together again in our very special Clovert House School. Take care. Bye. <laughs>